Philips is transforming into a health tech company, striving for better health and well-being through meaningful innovation. In the presentation today, they will focus on women's health. They will share why this is needed and how Philips is developing services to add value to people's lives and women in particular. It is our real pleasure to have these experts on stage. Please, a warm welcome for Charlotte and Raymond. Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our session. My name is Charlotte. I'm a strategy director at Philips within Mother and Child Care, and I'm here together with my colleague. Hi, everyone. I'm Raymond. I'm actually a solution leader for Philips in the women's health space, and it's great to be here with you today. So today we want to talk about a topic that we are both very passionate about, and also Philips is very passionate about bringing this topic forward, and it's women's health. So simply put, female bodies are different than men, right? We are shaped differently. We have different organs. We have different hormonal balance. And we simply respond differently to conditions and to medication. But this is not yet fully acknowledged. If you, for example, look at heart disease, this is still the number one cause of death among women. And probably we all know that if a man suffers from that, he feels pain in the chest, he has a paralyzed left side of the face, and we all know these symptoms. However, women that suffer from this condition, they can be a bit nauseous, feel a bit dizziness, but it's very hard to acknowledge this. And this is why also women die more often of this disease, because it's not, because it's not acknowledged. If you look throughout this room, you could hardly tell, but women's health is not a niche. We account for 50% of the population. So we cannot leave women underserved. And at the same time, we also see that there are rising women's health issues. We see increasing infertility. We see increasing maternal mortality rates. So it's really time to act. We see an uptake in investments, so we see changes, but it's still in a nascent stage. So we really need to take this moment to drive this change and accelerate women's health to bridge the gap. This is a very confronting picture, and we didn't include it to shock you, but we wanted to talk to you about endometriosis. This is actually a condition that 5 to 10% of women suffer from. It's cells similar to the lining of the uterus, but it grows outside of the uterus. And it causes severe pain and severe bleedings. But this is diagnosed on average. It takes eight years. So women are going through this, and then it takes eight years for us to discover that this is actually the case. And it's also a very important cause of infertility. So can you imagine women going through fertility programs for years and years to only later find out that this was actually the cause of all of it? Uh, if you look at this picture, you see uh, the scars on this woman's belly and you see the dates. You probably already did the math, but this shows that this woman had gone through surgery year on year on year. Yeah, and uh, endometriosis is actually not um, a singular example. There's actually a lot of examples in this space uh, where actually conditions are way more prevalent or very different for women versus men. Just to give a couple of examples, osteoporosis is four times more prevalent for women. Women are four times more likely to develop osteoporosis. Uh, also, a different example, dementia. Women are actually two times more likely to develop dementia over their lifetimes. And we actually know very little about all of this. We, we, there's very little data. There's a huge data gap in terms of all the stuff that we know about the female body and its physiology. Just to give one really, really hard-hitting example, and I think this is mind-blowing, uh, cl in clinical studies, women were only mandatorily um, uh, involved since 1994. Before 1994, women were not necessarily put into clinical studies. Blows my mind, why? Um, but it's the case, and as a result, just as an example, so uh, chronic pain, uh, actually 70% of chronic pain is actually experienced by women. And 80% uh, of all women, or 80% uh, of all pain is actually experienced by women. So 70% is, um, uh, is actually, um, uh, so it's tested by on men. So that's insane and uh, the data gap in that sense is 
perpetuated also by the fact that funding in this space is really, really scarce. So although we see a lot of femtech companies now uh, coming to the stage, and actually it's growing, there's a, not as much funding in this space as we would, uh, would need it to be. So the data gap just keeps on being prevalent. Now, in stark contrast, so if you look at uh, the role of women in healthcare, actually women are the chief medical officer of the home. And what does that mean? So women are by far the primary healthcare decision makers uh, in the home. So 90% of all healthcare decisions in a home are uh, done by women. Also, 80% of uh, household spending in healthcare is done by women as well. So they are making actually most of the decisions. They are far more likely to use digital tools to support themselves throughout um, health, so way more likely to have digital tools uh, being used. And 80% of all healthcare professionals are women. So as such, women are a pivotal role in the healthcare system, in our homes, uh, although we're not looking after them well enough. So you probably think of Philips as well as light bulbs, TVs. I still have people asking, why are you actually at this conference? This is my association. Um, but maybe also a large crowd of you knows that we've been transforming into a health tech company. And as a health tech company, we simply can't ignore half of the population, right? So we take it as a deep responsibility to include women uh, and to focus on women's health. So if you look at how we uh, approach health as Philips, we look at the entire care continuum. So we do not only look at diagnosis and treatment, but we include healthy living, preventative care, and home care. Only by covering this entire continuum, we believe that we can re realize better health outcomes, improve patient experience, staff experience, and something that probably some of you would be interested to hear, we can actually lower the cost of care, right? Yeah. So. Collaboration ac across this healthcare continuum is incredibly important. So you might wonder why is Philips also here and why are we uh, interacting within the insurance world? We actually see that a lot of players need to come together to make this happen. So government, providers, hospitals, healthcare practitioners, uh, companies uh, like ourselves, but also companies caring for women in, uh, in the workplace and health insurance companies. Take government. If you look at the US, uh, there's hardly any maternity care at all. Government can make a real difference and actually in impacting women's lives. Uh, providers in and healthcare practitioners in new treatments that they're creating and how they care for women. Uh, the example that uh, Charlotte gave about eight years to, to find out if somebody has endometriosis, providers have a big role actually to, to make that change. Companies also in how they support their, the, the women in the workplace, helping them go back to work uh, after pregnancy as an example, but also uh, companies like us making solutions and recognizing that um, that change needs to happen. So next to that, of course, health insurance companies have a huge role to play. So that's also why we're here, of course, connecting with everybody in the audience here to tell this story. Yes, so I now want to talk about a very pivotal moment in life of a woman. I see definitely women in the room. I assume that there are definitely also fathers and there are mothers in this room, so they will know what I'm talking about. Of course, it is the journey of fertility, conceiving, pregnancy, postpartum, becoming a mother, becoming a parent, and then also getting back into uh, uh, the rest of your daily routine. So why is this such a pivotal moment? It not only changes things physically, it's also emotional, mentally. Everything changes in your life and also practically. Um, having worked in insurance, I know always we talked about the family building. So much changes because people move. They need a bigger house. They need a car or a bigger car. They are thinking of how do I take care for my family if something happens to me? So they need health and, and, and life insurance. So it's a very important moment in life when so much changes. And we believe that if we can actually be there at this moment of truth, this is the point where you can really build a relationship that could potentially last a lifetime. But unfortunately, this is not always a happy journey for all of us, right? And it comes with a lot of hurdles. And what we actually see is that those hurdles and that the health problems, that they are increasing at the moment. And of course, this has to do with unhealthy lifestyles, but also with increasing childbearing age. So if you look at those stats, you see that one out of eight couples, they struggle to conceive. 
um, but also already 30% of the pregnancies is already high risk and this number is increasing as well. And also something that is really under-recognized, under-represented, is everything that happens postpartum. Because we're often very oriented looking at the health of the baby, but the mother goes through so much. And this also results into lack of care to bring her back into the workplace, uh, leading to a lot of postpartum depressions and burnouts afterwards. And this is something that affects us all. You might know us as a company that's really active in the consumer space. Um, we have in this, this area products like our event range, breast pumps, bottles, and so on. We have our power toothbrushes. Uh, we have created apps to support people. We'll talk a little bit more about that in, uh, in a couple of minutes. But we also have a very big clinical space. So we have our ultrasound solutions that are used in the hospital or even at home. So this is an example of the Lumify, and uh, that's a great way that you can actually be there in the home to do checkups uh, or monitor monitoring solutions, fetal monitoring solutions to do remote checkups as well. Um, now, one of the things, and you heard it, in, heard it in the introduction, is we are now really a health tech company moving towards solutions. So as we're looking into solutions, we see the, the necessity of preventative care being incredibly big in this space. And in preventative care, especially in this journey, there are a couple of ingredients that are uh, important to get right. First of all, it's really delivering the right care at the right point in time. So preventative care only works if you're there preventatively, if you're there early enough. But that means also that you're probably there when they're not even thinking about it yet. So getting that right is incredibly important. Next to that, having access to really high quality uh, accessible information. So information that's accessible in the way that you find it, it's accessible in the way that you can digest it, and it's high quality, that it really connects and resonates with those people. And last but not least, everybody will have a different journey. Everybody deserves their own journey as well. That means that you need to have an engaging uh, experience that actually caters to the individual needs of the different people. A great example of that is actually uh, an app that we have called Pregnancy Plus. Um, please look it up, download it, have a look. Uh, and this is um, a major app that's out there globally. And actually, f every five seconds, somebody joins this app to be guided along their pregnancy journey. And we'd love to show you a quick video of what this app is all about. Together with Pregnancy Plus, we will look at key psychological factors that can arise during the perinatal period, focusing on how your past can shape who you are now. So I hope that gives a brief impression of what the app can provide to women that are expecting. Um, we're proud to say that we are at the minute able to reach 90% of pregnant women in Western Europe. Um, so we have the coverage uh, across all age brackets. Um, and what is, I think, a very important point is not only do we get those women to the platform to help them educate to adopt healthier lifestyles, uh, they also download it in the first trimester. So that gives us actually ample opportunity to engage with women, to educate, to boost their confidence and to really increase health during the pregnancy. So if you look at those healthy impacts, there are just a few examples that I want to share with you. Um, so we've, we've done, of course, research to see how is this impacting the lives, the use of this app? How do they feel when they use it? And is it also impacting their actual behavior, right? Because that's what we're looking for. So if we look at those stats, we saw, uh, we saw that women recognize that by using the app, they better understand when and when not they need to consult a physician. And in 
over 50% of the cases, women also indicated that that impacted their behavior because they visited doctors less. So this is, I think, very important. We want to have efficient care and we don't want to make a pregnant woman feel restless when it's actually not necessary, right? Um, when we look at the healthy lifestyles, right, we just said that that's very important to improve those health outcomes. We see that 96% of women using the platform actually better understands what is healthy and what is not healthy. Um, and that also means that over 80% of women actually felt that they adopted their lifestyles and adopted healthier lifestyles. And then if we talk about the mental part, because we, it's always easy to talk about nutrition, about health and all those things, but it's also a huge change mentally, becoming a parent. Uh, women feel more educated and they also feel more confident. So if we look at those stats as well, of what happens postpartum or how confident women are when they get into labor and they need to take care of their, of their children, this is so important. So this is also positively impacted by the use of the app. Yeah, and we're actually uh, already collaborating with uh, health insurance, so public health insurance in the US with this app, uh, specifically Medicaid. So all the, um, uh, the women on Medicaid in Michigan um, are actually uh, able to get access to this app and get additional content, additional information to help them throughout their journey. One thing that we hear a lot when we talk with, uh, with insurance companies, that's so difficult to actually find out who is pregnant. And we're one of the first ones to know because the first thing that women do is actually download an app to get more information. And we're lucky to be uh, the one who's, who's there. Now, actually, um, uh, a bit of um, a different connection, but still there uh, related to uh, pregnancy, is uh, the dental space. Uh, there's a big connection between dental care and pregnancy uh, outcomes. So about, well, up to 75 women um, uh, who are pregnant will develop gingivitis, uh, which is a precursor to periodontitis. And that can have a huge impact on your pregnancy outcomes, such as having a low birth weight or getting a preterm birth. Uh, and a lot of women are not aware about that as well. So we actually did a study ourselves on that app because we have that huge population that we can reach out. And uh, we tried to f figure out, okay, what are dental habits of women uh, on the app? And quite shockingly, we saw that only 45% brush their teeth, uh, were brushing their teeth just once uh, a day uh, instead of the recommended two times. Uh, only 32% uh, uh, of women brush their teeth for the recommended two minutes uh, a day. And of course, there's even an overlap between uh, that audience. And 39% of women were not aware of actually the impact of proper dental hygiene uh, on their pregnancy outcomes. We did a study, uh, a 12-year-long, really uh, in-depth study on the effects of having proper dental care and uh, on their pregnancy. Uh, this is um, uh, what we call the HAPPY study, which we performed in, in Virginia. And we saw a reduction of 30% uh, preterm birth, so from 11.25% uh, to 7%. Uh, just with uh, dental care and advice. Now, bear in mind, it's not just the dental care on its own. We're making people way more aware about their own health care and what they need to do to, to stay healthy. So there's a huge impact that you have just by being there and giving information. Yeah, so we hope that with this presentation, um, if it was not yet fully on your priority list, that we've raised a bit of the awareness to prioritize women's health, because as we said, we cannot ignore 50% of the population. Um, and we can only really do this together to collaborate. So this would be an invitation for us um, take this moment, we see that things are changing, we see that women are speaking up, we see that the way that we talk about parenting, about pregnancy on social media is finally becoming more authentic and women can finally recognize what is really going on. Uh, we see that investment levels are going up, but still it's not enough. So we need everyone to work together to really bridge this gap between men and women's health. So we would like to invite you, of course, to join us to, uh, to make the change. So we're very open to connect. If you scan the QR code, you can easily send us an email uh, uh, to set up a, uh, a connection. We would be happy to do so. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for giving us the time and your attention uh, uh, to raise this topic. Uh, and we wish you uh, a great rest of the, of the afternoon uh, uh, of this conference. Thank you so much. Thank you.